Hi, I'm Adrian Brasovano, and I will talk about textual evidence for the perfunctoriness of independent medical reviews. This is joint work with Megan Moody and Rakshit Agrawal. Independent medical review processes are meant to provide protection for patients whose doctors prescribe treatments that are denied by their health insurance. Laws requiring IMRs were established in California and other states in the late 90s because patients and their doctors were concerned that health insurance plans deny coverage for medically necessary services to maximize profit. IMRs are regularly used to settle disputes between patients and their health insurance over what is medically necessary or experimental or investigational care. Medical necessity disputes occur between health plans and patients because the health plan disagrees with the patient's doctor about the appropriate standard of care or the course of treatment for a specific condition. Utilization review is the oversight mechanism through which private insurers control costs. Services rendered by a healthcare provider are reviewed to determine whether the services are medically necessary and the services that are not deemed medically necessary or fall outside the contractual terms of the insurance plans are not covered. Experimental or investigational procedures or treatments are procedures or treatments that the health plan, but not the patient's doctor, considers non-routine medical care or takes to be scientifically unproven. The typical argument is that evidence for treatment effectiveness fails the prevailing standard of scientific evidence which is usually randomized controlled trials. Experimental or investigational treatments that get denied include promising treatments that have not been fully tested in clinical RCTs because they are new or they treat rare conditions, so RCT costs, if RCTs are feasible at all, won't be recovered. Randomized controlled trials are expensive and time-consuming and they are run by pharmaceutical companies only if the treatment is ultimately estimated to be profitable. RCTs require minimal assumptions and can operate with little prior knowledge, which is an advantage when persuading distrustful audiences, but it is a disadvantage for cumulative scientific progress where prior knowledge should be built upon, not discarded. RCTs can play a role in building scientific knowledge and useful predictions, and we add treatment recommendations, but only as part of a cumulative program in combination with other methods. Thus, in flexibly applying the RCT gold standard, for example, to conditions that are less prevalent, is tantamount to ignoring a doctor's recommendation in a seemingly well-reasoned and scientific way. IMRs are the third and final stage in the medical review process. After in-person and possibly repeated examination of the patient, the doctor recommends a treatment, which is submitted for approval to the patient's health plan. If the treatment is denied in this first stage, both the doctor and the patient may file an appeal with the health plan. This triggers a second stage of reviews by the health insurance provider, during which a patient can supply additional information and a doctor may engage in peer-to-peer -peer discussion with the health insurance representative. If these second reviews uphold the initial denial, the only recourse the patient has is the state-regulated IMR process. IMRs must be initiated by the patient and submitted to the California Department of Managed Healthcare. Motivated treating physicians may provide statements of support for inclusion in the documentation provided to DMHC by the patient. In theory, the IMR process creates a new relationship of care between the patient and the reviewing physicians hired by a private contractor on behalf of DMHC. The reviewing physician's decisions are supposed to be made based on what is in the best interest of the patient and not on cost concerns. It is this relation of care that constitutes the consumer protection for which IMR processes were legislated. This is the roadmap for the talk. Uh, we are just done with the introduction. And now I will move to the main arguments and predictions, after which we will review the main results and their limits. We will take a closer look at the models and then briefly conclude. Since IMRs are the final stage in a long bureaucratic process, the specifics of patient history and the specifics of the recommended treatments are likely crucial. Therefore, we expect the text of the IMRs, which justifies the final determination, to be highly individualized. We therefore expect a reasoned, thoughtful IMR 
to not be highly generic and templatic. We expect higher inter-IMR similarity and templaticity only if the IMRs are reduced to a more or less automatic application of some pre-specified set of rules. Moving now to the main results and their limits. The text of the IMR findings does not provide unambiguous evidence about the quality and appropriateness of the IMR process. If we had access to the full, anonymized patient files submitted to the IMR reviewers, we might have been able to provide much stronger evidence that IMRs should have a significantly higher percentage of overturns and that the IMR process should be improved in various ways. For example, patients should be able to check that all the relevant documentation has been collected and will be reviewed, and the anonymous reviewers should be held to higher standards of doctor-patient care. At the very least, one would want to compare the report's letters produced by the patient doctors and the IMR texts. However, such information is not available and not likely to become available anytime soon. Our main dataset, therefore, consists of the corpus of IMR decisions made available by the California DMHC site as of June 2019. A qualitative inspection reveals that the reviews focus more on the review procedure and associated legalese than the actual medical history of the patient and the details of the case. For example, decisions for chronic pain management seem to mostly rubber stamp the medical treatment utilization schedule guidelines with very little consideration of the prevalence of the underlying conditions and no thoughtful evaluation of the risk-benefit profile of the denied treatment relative to the specific medical history of the patient. Our main goal here is to investigate to what extent NLP methods that are able to extract insights from large corpora point in the same direction, thus mitigating cherry-picking biases that are sometimes associated with qualitative investigations. Specifically, we will analyze the text of the IMR findings and compare them with a sample of 50,000 Yelp reviews and the corpus of 50,000 IMDb movie reviews. As the size of the data has significant consequences for language model training, we expect models trained on the Yelp and IMDb corpora to outperform models trained on the IMR corpus because the IMDb corpus is twice as large as the IMR corpus and the Yelp samples contain almost twice as many reviews. However, we are able to construct a very good language model for the IMR corpus using inductive sequential transfer learning, and the model achieves a much lower perplexity and a higher categorical accuracy on unseen test data compared to models trained on the larger Yelp and IMDb corpora. We see similar trends in topic models and also classification models predicting IMR outcomes or binarized sentiment for Yelp and IMDb reviews. It seems that movies and restaurant reviews exhibit a much larger variety, a more contentful discussion, and a greater attention to detail compared to IMR reviews. To mitigate potentially significant registered differences between IMRs and movie or restaurant reviews, we examine four additional corpora. A drug reviews corpus, a data science job postings corpus, a corpus of legal case summaries, and a corpus of cooking recipes. These specialized register corpora are potentially more similar to IMRs than IMDb or Yelp because they are more likely to be highly similar, to include boilerplate text, and to have a templatic or standardized structure. We find that the predictability of IMR texts, as measured by language model perplexity and categorical accuracy, is higher than all the comparison datasets by a good margin. Let's now take a closer look at the models. All datasets were split into training, validation, and test, and the test sets were all used only for the final model evaluation. We discuss four kinds of models, as already anticipated, classification models, topic models, language models with transfer learning, and classification models with transfer learning. For classification models, we regress outcomes upheld overturned for IMR or negative positive sentiment for IMDb or Yelp against the text of the findings or of the reviews. We extract features by converting each text into sparse bag of words vectors of dictionary length. The multi-layer perceptron model had one hidden layer with 1000 units and the ReLU nonlinearity. We see from the table that the text of the IMR findings or of the IMDb or Yelp reviews 
is highly predictive of the associated binary outcomes. The highest accuracy is achieved for the IMR dataset, despite the fact that it contains half of the observations of the other two datasets. Turning now to topic models, these are models that distill semantic properties of words and documents in a corpus in terms of probabilistic topics. Topic models are typically evaluated by means of coherence scores, and typically, as we increase the number of topics, the coherence scores increase until they start leveling out, which is what we see for the IMDb and Yelp corpora in the central and rightmost figure on the slide. In contrast, the four-topic model has the highest coherence score for the IMR dataset, and as we add more topics, the coherence score drops. These are the word clouds for the four-topic IMR model, and we see that these clouds reflect the legalese associated with the IMR review procedure, and very little of the treatments and conditions under review. In contrast, high-scoring IMDb and Yelp models reflect contentful features. For example, movies are classified into family life, westerns, musicals, and the places reviewed in the Yelp corpus are classified into breakfast and or lunch places, restaurants, shops, bars, hotels, etc. Turning now to language models, these kind of models, specifically when using neural networks, usually have a recurrent or transformer-based architecture, and they are designed to learn textual distributional patterns in a self-supervised manner. Recurrent network models typically use long, short-term memory cells, which enables them to learn long-term dependencies in sequences. We estimate an LSTM-based language model for the IMR corpus using inductive sequential transfer learning, and we use the AWD LSTM model, which is a vanilla LSTM model with four kinds of dropout regularization, an embedding size of 400, three LSTM layers, and a backpropagation through time of size 70. The AWD LSTM model is pre-trained on Wikitext 103, which consists of more than 28,000 pre-processed Wikipedia articles with a total of 103 million words. This pre-trained model is fairly simple. It does not have any attention components and no skip connections. And the pre-training corpus of 100 million words is of modest size. To obtain our final language models for the IMR, IMDb, and Yelp corpora, we fine-tuned the pre-trained AWD LSTM model using discriminative and slanted triangular learning rates. And as we see in the table on the slide, the perplexity for the IMR findings corpus is much lower than for the IMDb or Yelp reviews. And the language model can correctly guess the next word more than half the time. In addition, the quality of the generated text for the IMR model is much higher than for the IMDb and Yelp models. What you see on the slide are two examples of generated text with the seed text boldfaced. The predictability of the IMR corpus, as reflected in its perplexity and categorical accuracy scores, is also clearly higher than the four auxiliary corpora we discussed, namely legal cases, data science jobs, drug reviews, and recipes. In conclusion, Language model learning is significantly easier for IMRs compared to the other six corpora. The IMR corpus is at the very end of the high to low predictability spectrum. We would not expect such highly predictable texts if each decision was accompanied by thorough reasoning relying on the specifics of the case at hand. These medically complex cases are arguably as diverse as Hollywood blockbusters or fashionable restaurants. The patients themselves certainly experience them as unique and meaningful, and their reviews should be similarly diverse or at most as templatic as a job posting or a cooking recipe. Thank you.